Dylan William wrote an article which nearly gave me a heart attack. It was called, Why Teaching Will Never Be an Evidence-Based Profession. Right? And you know, I read it and thought, oh, Jesus. That's my morning gone. But as ever, he was good and wise, and he was basically articulating a view that there were so many obstacles and problems to teaching being, for example, um, you know, comparable to a natural science or something like that, which is absolutely correct. And, and the social scientific sphere is far, far more problematic, and I would argue more prone to, <laughs> perhaps more prone to the biases of interpretation to which we all find ourselves subject. Um, I like to see teaching as being an evidence-supported activity, an evidence-supported experience. That, as I said to you in my introduction, that there was craft in the classroom, that there was experience to be gained in the class classroom, what Aristotle would call practical wisdom. And I would argue that that practical wisdom actually informs about 80% of my decisions as a teacher. If a child throws his pencil case at another child in my lesson, which of course would never happen, because I'm the behaviour star. <laughs> as soon as the kids found that out, it was like they painted a target on my back. Um, if a child does something like that in my classroom and then runs out the room crying, the conversation I'm going to have with that child outside, especially when I find out that their grandfather's just passed away, is not going to be based on an RCT. Right? I know that, I get that. And sometimes the research ed relationship with research has been mischaracterized as being, well, you must try and authenticate everything with a piece of, you know, a piece of you know, published research. No, that's not the case. I think teaching is very experiential. It's very craft-based. However, it is also, as something which happens in a physical world, amenable to structured study. And that different types of uh, research can teach us and tell us different things about our teaching experience. And where those two things overlap, I think, is where professionalism starts to emerge. There are two ways in which I think teachers can meaningfully engage with research. One is subliminal, and one is perhaps a little bit more conscious. Subliminally, I would like to see teachers being trained in more research evidenced techniques. Um, I'd like teachers to be more aware of, for example, um, Hempenstall's work on direct instruction, as well as collaborative learning and so on, and cooperative learning, so that they can make professional judgments about what they want to do in their classroom. I would like to see that kind of stuff brought far more to the explicit fore in their teaching, so that they can then absorb that and use it experientially as they wish and choose, without necessarily being students of either of those techniques. And at the same time, I also want some teachers, the teachers that want to, the real keen beans, the nerds, who come to conferences like this. I want as many of them as possible to engage with as much of this as possible in their own time, to read papers, to, to form journal clubs, to ask academics and researchers what they meant by X, Y, and Z, to ask them if they can become involved in research projects and so on, to read more broadly and more widely to raise that level of understanding within our profession. Again, not universally, but perhaps um, as a version of division of labour. One thing that, for example, David Weston uh, of the Teacher Development Trust and I both agree is that teaching should become far more of a specialised profession, that there shouldn't just be one path for the classroom teacher, which you know, inexorably leads up to headship or not, which, which tends to be the one linear path that most teachers have. I'd love to see specialisation. I'd love to see some teachers becoming experts in behaviour, <laughs> such as it is. I'd love to see, it's, I'd, I'd, I'd love to be one. And I'd love to see teachers becoming experts in research as a career differentiation plan. Maybe we'll see that one day. I'd like to create better relationships between the different points within the ecosystem. There are an enormous number of fabulous institutions out there already that are already doing wonderful work with engaging teachers with research and vice versa. Um, I want to try and help broker those conversations. And it's been an honor as part of Research Ed to be part of those, uh, those brokerages. And like I say, there's already an enormous number of people doing it. The Super Network, for example, in Cambridge, many of you will be aware of. I mean, they've been doing this for decades. And you know, the, all I can do for them is to simply try and bring them to a different audience and then share the amazing work that they've done. So there's lots of, lots of things like that. Um, 
And finally, to raise standards through this relationship. Yeah, the, 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 there's no point in doing all this unless you think there's going to be some kind of impact and some kind of outcome. Um, it's all about the kids, isn't it? That's why I do this. You just do it for the kids. Um, we do this so that there's impact in the classroom and so that children and teachers uh, have better lives. <laughs>